Hey guys, Ken Smith. Ken Smith Fisher. Uh, so this is uh, Rayburn Report for you again this week. And uh, I went south looking for the shad spawn and pulled up on a spot where they've spawned pretty good in the past. They're still having some cool nights. Uh, but I did hit on what felt like a little bit of a shad spawn. Uh, so let's let's run through this footage right here, and uh, then I'll kind of show you what I did thereafter. here again looking for the shad spawn this morning and uh, don't think I found it there's just no shad activity I'm back down lake again uh, it's a nice solid fish these cool nights just keep messing it up Temp's getting there. Water temp right here is 80.7. If we're getting close, yeah, there may be a little shad spawn going on right there. So, maybe, maybe. A little chunk of keepers. This is an area that historically there's been a pretty good shad spawn shed like getting on top of that grass and there's not much grass. What grass is here is super duper shallow and that may be part of the problem. Just not the 10 12 foot grass you like to see. So what makes me think the shad spawn's not in full swing is there's no quality fish up there. And when, when it really gets going, when it's a gorge fest, there's three and four and five pounders, lots of two and a half and three pounders, but there's a lot better fish mixed in there. And I think I probably showed you all six or eight fish there. I think I caught 15 is what I counted as I edited through the, through the footage on an A-Rig. I had one little double, uh, that actually I jumped one of them off and caught the other one, but uh, that is not full-fledged shad spawn yet. It's just not quite there. I will note to you though, that that spot is a spot that did not have any grass, any hydrilla really at all on it, uh, three, two or three weeks, three weeks ago. And it has pretty grass growing out into about seven or eight feet. I'll also tell you, there's gonna be flipping on Rayburn this fall, or excuse me, this summer. There is some spectacular grass out in 10, 11 feet right now. We've had really good water, stable water levels. Uh, this could be, and we're gonna have tournaments in the summer this year. 
So we might see some names at the top of the leaderboards we hadn't seen in a long time because we've quit summer fishing. And uh, some of us really, really like flipping that summer grass. So uh, I hope to have a good summer down here, assuming we do get to have tournaments. Speaking of which, we've got an Outlaw Outdoors Team Series right here on this date coming up. I can't remember what it is, so I'm going to put it in here later. But we're live again, so we've got the Team Series back up, and I think they've got their schedule reposted. You can find that on the Outlaw Outdoors channel. If you ever wonder why I have to take these little breaks, it's to yell at the Goofy Dogs. I did check while I was yelling at the Goofy Dogs. So the Outlaw Series will be May 30th, going out of a Umpree Pavilion. So I think that's the first big tournament that'll be back on Rayburn. They've had big fields at their first tournament. Uh, so uh, we'll actually, their first two tournaments. We should have, I suspect we'll have a good turnout there. But let's still be safe. Let's think about social distancing and speaking of which. Just be smart about it, right? I mean, you don't have to get right on top of guys, some guys, and you just kind of be careful. But like, I, I'm not shaking hands right now. It's just something I'm not comfortable with. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've had two friends now, uh, two acquaintances, two people that I know of that have passed away from this thing, uh, and, and several that have been sick. So I'm just being safe for me and my family. Don't take it personally. And just, you know, be aware of that when you walk up to somebody that they may not want to have you real close to them or want you, you know, want to be shaking hands right now. Because we're going to see that even at the end of this month at that tournament. Just be thinking about that a little bit. So, uh, where was I? So, I, as I said, I was looking for that shad spawn, didn't see it. Uh, and then I just, I, the hay grass was right there. I thought, well, let's see if there's bait fish in the hay grass. I picked up my Divine Swim Jig, which, by the way, you could still get that swim jig on a deal on the uh, Rayburn Spring Box on Six Cents website. I'll put a link below. It's about a $40 deal and you get $45 or $47 worth of stuff, which includes swim jigs and the, the big swim bait as well, uh, or a swim bait. Um, and I, I pushed up to the edge of the hay grass, and picked it up, I spooked bait on one of my first or second casts and I thought if there's bait in here, there's fish in here and this happened. Coming in with a load. There we go. There's a mama. On the divine swim jig. You see, I'm cooking that swim jig. I don't want them to get a real big look at it. I'm looking beat up bad. I'm really looking for them to react to it. That's about a hundred yards I've gone down with it now lost one and I caught that one so first sign when you get up here the first sign is my bait spooking bait and if your bait spooking bait there's other things up there eating on them so that's good stuff that's fun stuff right there Ooh, look at that little hole right there so I caught those kind of bang bang uh, went down and fished two more spots like that had one more swing on a swim jig but they really weren't committed to it so uh, I, I moved out uh, over just a grass drain. I've got a drain that I knew there was some really good grass in it and fished the outside edge of it with an, with an Alabama rig, with, a, with that Shane's Bait Alabama rig you guys see me throw a lot. And uh, had, uh, had one bite and caught one little fish. And as I fished up that drain, I just picked up that big six cents swim bait on an open hook, something that I got exposed to a couple of years ago by a couple of co-anglers in a coastal tournament. And uh, man, when they're on it, they will smoke it. And that Super Duty 2 rod is the perfect rod for that. You're gonna see both these fish just absolutely have it choked. Let's 
Super Duty 2 rod that somebody told me about. It's just an ideal rod. You can throw it a long, long ways and it's got the right amount of bend so that when they run up there to eat it, they get the whole thing. It's a nice little old fish. Dunk! Like a lot of guys, I don't pull to the left so good, but once again, just that rod just got that right action to let them really get it, and then it's got, it's so long, you can get a really good pull on him, even though he's a super little guy. But I'm still not catching any quality fish, so I had just a little bit of time left to fish, so I went out and got on a, it, it's really main lake, but most people would call it a secondary point. And I just started out deep, started working my way shallow, and here's what happened. Good little fish. Just working my way up a point. I started out there in about 20 feet of water and I'm up to 11. Just coming up the point. I've got that little tiny hook on there, so I'm not going to pull on this fish very hard. It looked like when it jumped, it was about a four pounder, but it's still heavier than that. Nope, it's not. Nice bite, though. Drilled that baby brush hog. Dunk. Boy, he is plowing down. This fish thinks he's way bigger than he is. Goodness. Don't want to bend that little hook out. The only downside to that little bitty hook. When they're stuck, they're stuck. Bend them out. Oh, it's a nice fish. Yo, come here, baby doll. Open up. There we go. Nice fish. Not as big as I thought he was. He's three and a half. big as I thought he was. He is hooked and then he's hooked again. By the way, I meant to mention these the other day. I've always bought cheap pliers. And I bought these the other day. I've now bought, this is the same folks who make my net. And I bought an ice chest from them too. It's called Ego. This is a. This is by far the most I've ever paid for a pair of pliers, but they're only like, I don't know, 25, 30 bucks. Maybe a little bit more. But what I like about them, they got a super good pair of cutters on them. And they've got a, uh, split ring tool on the end and that's actually why I bought them I went online and I looked for a split ring tool and I saw this sort of a combo deal and I thought you know I never carry a split ring tool in the boat with me so it would be kind of nice to have so I bought them and I like them a lot I just keep from flinging them in the water I mentioned this uh, while I'm thinking about it uh, when I where I started this morning uh, where I caught those fish on that point and then went down that haygrass and caught those fish. That's not just 
uh, a random point, not just uh, so. They're, they're in my mind, contour lines are your friends, and when you're going to fish shallow, especially pre and post spawn, you really want to find where you've got those contour lines close to the bank, so you've got that deep water close to the bank, and ideally, ideally, you want it to be a creek swing. So anytime a creek runs up close to the bank, something caused it to turn and go back away from the bank. And most of the times that's hard bottom. And so uh, that spot where I was this morning, I actually was off the point. I was around the side of the point because that's where that creek ran in there and swung against that, that bank. And you know, again, it, there's obviously some kind of hard bottom there that made that creek turn. Otherwise creeks would just run straight or drains either one. Uh, so just keep that in mind when you're looking at your topo maps uh, or at your at your uh, Lake Master map on your on your units. You want when you fish shallow, you want to fish shallow where they have access to go deep quick. And it's not that they're going to run out there. That's just where they're going, right? It's a hallway. They come out of that deep stuff up to that shallow stuff to feed and right back out to that deep stuff. So just keep that in mind. Look for those. And ideally, it's a creek swing. You'd be amazed. Most of the big stringers that get caught get caught off some kind of a creek swing uh, down here, whether it's in six feet of water or in 36 feet of water. So just uh, keep that in mind when you're looking for those shallow fish to not just pull up on any random point. Spend a little bit of time looking at your map and figuring out where it's going to be the best place. You know, I would pick out six or eight places if you don't know a lake and go mark them all on your map so that when you fish three and you don't get bit, you got three more to go try. So there you go, guys. Another chunk, same, basically the same spot. I fished across it and turned around and came back and went the other direction. And thunk, 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 there he was. Those two fish, uh, that was the only two bites I had out there and I kind of ran out of time. I, I look back through the footage, I caught almost, I think 28 or 29 fish uh, over that basically about half a day, a little bit more of a half a day. Still not catching a lot of quality fish. Uh, they're around, you know, I probably had, I had a pair of six, I probably only had 12 or 13 pound limit when it would have all been said and done, a five fish limit would have, would have won nothing. But I uh, had a good time, had fun. And uh, I got to start practicing a little bit differently now that we got tournaments coming up. I can't just go out and fun fish and catch a bunch of fish. So you'll see me adjusting my fishing over the next couple of weeks, moving deeper. Trying, well, I'll still keep checking to see if there's any frog fish, but uh, moving out deeper, trying to catch those better fish and trying to find schools of fish as opposed to those one and two off fish. So uh, that's my report for you guys this week. I appreciate you tuning in. We'll be back on the water later this week. and We'll get some more footage up for you guys. If you don't subscribe, please do. If you do, thanks so much. Click the bell. You'll get notifications every time I post a new video. And don't forget to check out my off-topic videos as well that I do uh, pretty much weekly. So thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you all on the water real soon.